Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're so glad that you've joined us. On today's program, you'll see what happened to one woman whose search for acceptance left her feeling emptier and emptier. Mm. Misha shares why one simple choice to trust God brought her everything she needed. And we have Jamie's story. His need for acceptance led him to being wanted by the FBI. Wow. I know. You know, we all have the longing inside of us. Some of us feel a void in our lives, so we fill it with a quick fix or something we think we need, like a relationship. Yeah, that's right. All these choices bring enjoyment for a while, but ultimately there's a need for something more. Right, Brian? Yeah. Uh, have you ever had a time in your life where you felt you wanted something more? You know, I, I, I believe that uh, we all have those times. And one specific moment that I remember is uh, I had everything that I wanted going after dreams and goals and everything, but it was that one moment I felt like I just need to fill this void of being married. Ooh, I wanted to yeah. be married. Well, that's a good desire, right? Right. Yeah. You know, so no longer, you know, yeah. the whole focus on, on the railroad track of dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just started crying out to God and saying, Lord, I, I really want to be married. I want to settle this part of my life. Mm. And uh, by the grace of God, he just set up some dynamics. And 33 years later, um, yeah. And how long from that time did you meet Karen and... You guys get married. Well, well, that was an interesting story, but I'm going to leave that for another oh, okay. show. All so right. you tell leave me about hanging. your long. <laughs> this is the cliffhanger. Well, boom, 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 boom. Well, you know, as simple as it can be. I remember being uh, working in an old folks' home doing food service once oh. uh, every summer to pay for university. And I thought, I just want more. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was not where I wanted to stay. <laughs> You know, and with Christmas only weeks away, not just retirement homes, but we also have something special for you. We're going to be in our new 12 Days of Christmas devotional mm -hmm. series. Brian and I will be unpacking, unpacking the accounts of both Matthew and Luke from the Bible and detailing some of the key historical people, places, and events surrounding the birth of Jesus. It's really going to be a fascinating month. And to get it all started today, this is how Misha learned to let go of her painful past. We believed in the five pillars of Islam. Our family was very, very strict Muslims. We believed in making prayer five times a day. My father was very serious about us studying the Quran and us knowing what it said. Listen, it was demanded of her as a child when Misha Wesley heard the Quran read aloud. Misha obeyed because she wanted to please Allah and not anger her father. I was very proud to wear my headdress, my kimar. You know, even as a child, I felt kind of superior. But despite his religious fervor, Misha's father was physically and sexually abusive. My mom was so helpless. She had no one to help her. One time I saw my mom and dad fight each other she would throw weights at him to fight him back. It was a very violent upbringing. I remember one time laying next to my sister and my father as he sexually abused her. It was so painful. This was my normal. Please, 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 please. The perversion and violence in her home made Misha question Allah's power and care. And I really began to doubt a lot, a lot. But I felt the urge to pray to God and not Allah. I don't know why I said that. I just asked God, please help my sisters so they won't get beat by him no more. And I remember crying, and I remember praying that prayer. The next night, police pounded on their door and arrested Misha's father. He was charged with robbery and attempted murder and sentenced to 10 years in prison. To Misha, it was a sign. I kept praying that way because I knew God would answer. To get help from other relatives, Misha's mother, her daughters, and young son moved to New York City. However, there was never enough money to support them. So in her early teens, Misha shed her kimar and her dignity to help pay for her family's food and rent. I started stripping when I was 15 years old. My mom did not have any idea. And it was fast and it was easy. And I needed that money. You know, just, I stopped believing at all, at all. Didn't care about any God, any Allah. I was living fast and I was loving it. Two years after Misha's father was paroled, he died. 
Misha followed her mother and sisters to Alabama, where they had relocated. Still in high school, she met Larry and fell in love. After graduation, they married. There was a genuineness about him. There was a realness. He was so loving. I think he filled that void that I really wanted that someone to love me. At times, Misha went to church with Larry's family and cousin. But worshiping together, men and women together, being raised as a Muslim, not having men and women together, I thought it was strange. Misha wasn't excited about church, but rather a secret relationship. She left Larry and committed adultery with an older man. I saw my father be promiscuous and I thought it was okay while he was married. So I figured, you know, why not? Why not? Misha and Larry got back together to try and work through the betrayal. Larry's cousin started posting sermons on her Facebook page about Jesus. One day in her car, Misha stopped and listened to a post that overwhelmed her. I don't know how long I was out. I just don't know. But I know that I was out. And that day, my soul was saved. Because in the prayer, she was saying, surrender. Say it, surrender, I surrender. And I kept telling Jesus, I surrender. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, Jesus. It was like a fear washed over me. Not like a fear that I was scared of the dark, but a fear that was heavy and I felt all over me. It was no longer God, it was Jesus. And I surrendered to him that day, fully, totally, because I said it with my mouth, with my heart, with my mind, I meant it. Immediately, Misha felt deep sorrow for those she'd harmed, especially Larry, and forgiveness towards those who had wounded her. It added more pain in my heart to see Larry in pain, to see Larry hurting the way I made him hurt. And I actually looked at it and I said, I caused this. Everybody who offended me or everybody who did anything to me, he told me to pray for them, let them go. All Misha's desires and priorities changed too. I started to want and desire his word. I was reading the Bible more and more. I was in the word more and more. I was hungry. But now, because I take the word and I apply the word to my life, to my family, to those around me, to the children I minister to, that's the difference. We have peace, we have love. And I remember the Lord always told me, I will never allow violence to be mentioned of in your land ever again. And there's no more violence. Jesus gave me something that I never had. He was the Father. He is Abba, Abba Father. He was the Father I was seeking from other men, even in a strip club. He was the good, good Father that I desperately wanted to meet and I needed. I love what Nisha said at the end, that Jesus gave me something that I never received out of my earthly father. He became my Abba father. Yeah, I, yeah. that struck me too, Brian. I mean, yeah. she, all of her life was looking for a good dad. Yeah. yeah, And you know, it's so, this is so the gospel, isn't it? That we find a good father. Yeah. And Jesus is the one who points and says, you, here's my daddy, he wants to be your daddy too. Well, and, and that is so true. And so many times we look at the NGO, we look at the New Testament and we, we wonder, is there a place for me in there? And uh, he is a good, good father. You know, I love what it says in Romans chapter eight, and it says this in verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption mm -hmm by one whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Yes. That's so good. You know, I don't know if that's you today, that you faced, you, you are just longing for a good dad. Romans uh, chapter 10 tells us exactly what Misha did in her story. She professed Jesus as Lord. Yeah. She declared Jesus as Lord. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 say, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can 
be saved. That is the cry out for salvation. Salvation says you can have new life in Jesus. Can I pray for you right now if that's you? I just pray, Father, may the one listening now cry out to you and say, you are Lord Jesus. I receive you. I welcome you into my heart and I welcome you, Heavenly Father, to be my good dad. If you prayed that today, call us, 1-855-759-0700. It's a new day for you. Yeah, and now bondage is broken and the spirit of adoption has come. Well, up next, Jamie's search for acceptance leads to all the wrong places. There's Black Friday, there's Cyber Monday, and there's Giving Tuesday. Who are you giving to this year? How about 700 Club Canada? Come and be partners with us as we bless Canada together. Your giving makes a difference in the lives of people across our nation. Why don't you give today so that you can make a difference? Join us and be a part of blessing someone today. Give on Giving Tuesday. I felt like I didn't fit in. The kids would start laughing at me. And the more they laughed, the more I got angrier. As a mixed-race child, Jamie Torres was often the target of ridicule. His mother was white and unmarried. His father was a Puerto Rican whom he never met. My father deceived my mom. He already had a family, and it just crushed, crushed my mama, and we ended up in the South Bronx. His troubles increased when his mom married and had other children. There was a difference between them being white and me dark-skinned. I started hanging out with people who accepted me. With those people, they were, they were affiliated with gangs. And I loved them because they were just like me. Uh, I felt like, man, this is really what I've been looking for. I fit in. They asked me to do whatever, and because I longed for their approval, uh, I did whatever it took uh, to earn their love. Jamie's zeal often got him into trouble. So when he was 14, his mom sent him to Puerto Rico to meet his real dad. For the first time, I feel like, wow, I feel like I had an identity. I belong to him. Come to find out my dad was a drug dealer in Puerto Rico. And uh, next thing I know, I started working with my dad. And I became addicted to smoking weed and then the cocaine. And then uh, you, you, you look uh, to subside that pain and that rejection because I felt, even though I was in Puerto Rico and with my real dad, I still felt rejected from him. I just didn't fit in. And the only time I, f I felt a little bit good was when I was high. Jamie eventually moved back to the States. He kicked his drug habit, but stayed in the drug trade. I got hooked up with some Cubans and Colombians. I was uh, getting kilos from Colombia. You know, I got involved in, in, with a crew that was real strong. Money was my god. The more money and drugs I had, the more people acknowledged me. You're my man, and, and I loved that. I had to go get that money by all means necessary. I didn't care what it took. Throughout his 20s, Jamie's drug business grew, which put him on the FBI's radar. So they built the case, and then they arrested me. They were trying to give me a life sentence. I was scared, to be honest with you. I was scared like a little kid, and I, I knew that I was going to spend the rest of my life in prison and die there. While awaiting his trial, Jamie met Gene Lawson. For a man in prison, he was unusually happy. But here I am. I can't sleep at night. I'm worried sick. I'm afraid. And here this man's been sentenced to 25 years, and he's walking like he don't have a care in the world. And deep down, I didn't tell him, but I wanted what he had. He had a peace, and I longed for that. Over the next few weeks, Gene talked about the peace that comes from faith in Jesus, no matter where you are. But Jamie resisted, afraid it would make him appear weak. Until one Sunday, he found himself outside the prison chapel. And I went in and I sat all the way in the back because I'm still conscious. I don't want my homeboy to see me. And next thing I know, this man started speaking. It seemed like everything he was saying was directly at me. It was something that I was living. It was piercing my heart. It was like he was in my thoughts. It was like this man was in my heart. I felt this great urge to cry. 
I ran out that chapel and I ran hard to my cell there and I started crying. I cried hard. I never cried. It was a different kind of cry. And I said, God, if you real, give me what Dean has. I wanted what Dean had. And then I went to sleep. A couple hours later, Jamie woke up and went looking for Gene. He found him in the cafeteria and told Gene about his encounter with God. And he asked me a question. He said, do you want to feel this peace forever? And I said, yes, sir. And he opened that little black book and he went to Romans chapter 10. And he shared with me the gospel, the plan. We got it on knees. And I did the sinner's prayer. I repented of my sins. Then I received the Lord in my heart. I felt a weight come off me. You would think that in prison, it's meant for you to lose your freedom. But actually, I found my freedom in prison. And then my journey started with Jesus. Jamie lost his case and was sentenced to 25 years. But having found peace and acceptance through Christ, prison didn't scare him anymore. He used the time inside to share Christ with others. The 700 Club would come in the morning, and boy, I would get inspired. And that's what God used to start my first Bible study in jail. God used me as a missionary in prison. And everywhere I went, I started a Bible study. Later, a nonprofit picked up his case and fought for a mistrial. They won, and after serving only 10 years, Jamie was set free. Today, by the grace of God, I go all around the country and tell people of a great God who's able to redeem, save, change. I don't care what your past looked like. It can be the worst of worst. And he loves you unconditionally. And he has a future for you. Please just trust him. Just cry out to him. He loves you with everything in him. Jamie is so right. He says, cry out to God and he will answer. That's what the Old Testament prophet said in Jeremiah 33 and 3. You know, many times it takes a difficult encounter or situation to make us cry out to God. And I don't know why that is so often, but many times when our foundation is shaking, if we look down, it's God getting our attention. And it, through circumstances, through situations, I really believe that you are watching that particular testimony for a reason. Because so many times when we're starting off in our childhood, in our early development, we go through uh, taunting and also these incredible, just, you know, the times of, of uh, people hazing us. And that's what happened to Jamie. And because of that, it put a, a trauma on his spirit and emotionally, not just because of his dad, not just because he was from mixed parentage, but I believe because it really hurt him deep inside emotionally and hurt people hurt people. I wonder if you're losing your temper, you find yourself struggling with anxiety, oppression, a lot of different issues. Today, I want to lead you in a prayer. The Bible says something so powerful in John 8. It says, whom the Son makes free shall be free indeed. Today, you can have that freedom. I want to get something into your hands. It doesn't cost you anything, but I'm going to pray a prayer with you. And I want you to call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. Come on, let's do business with God. Jesus, I'm tired, and I'm sick and tired. I confess my sin. I turn from doing things my way, and I turn to you in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that, call that number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. Up next, we begin our Christmas devotional series with a look at good man, a good man who struggled with unbelief. Hmm, I wonder who that is. The Transforming Word 3 was very inspirational. Hearing Pat's introduction to the reading of the Proverbs to set up the importance of Proverbs. It was like a fresh awakening. Take a journey through the book of Proverbs with Pat Robertson in the Transforming Word, Volume 3. This recording is essential because it's the Word of God. 
When listening to an audio version, it takes on another dimension. It kind of settles your spirit to hear the things proclaimed. It's a stronger word. In this dynamic reading, you'll learn biblical principles for gaining wisdom, favor, and anointing. Everyone should listen to the CD because it has something for everyone. It can give you encouragement at any time in your life. Call now to get the Transforming Word, Volume 3. And as a special bonus, receive Pat's signature teaching, The Three Blessings. Available now. You know, in Luke 1, we meet Zachariah. He's one of the temple priests who waited all his life anticipating and longing for the Messiah to come. But when an angel appears to him with a message from God, Zachariah didn't believe it. Now, before we're too hard on him, we have to ask ourselves, would we have had the same response? Let's read what happened in Luke 1, verses 8 and 9. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Well, finally, you see the big day came for Zachariah to be one to enter the holy place and to minister before the golden altar of incense. This was a big deal as there would have been nearly a thousand priests in each division. So a priest may only get this opportunity once in a lifetime, but this was his day. And as he's performing his priestly duty, an angel of the Lord shows up. And of course, what are the first words out of every angel's mouth? Don't be afraid, right? Zachariah, the angel said, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth. Wow, now that is a holy encounter. Hearing from an angel that your prayer has been answered, Zacharias should have been jumping for joy. He and Elizabeth had waited years to have a baby. But here's Zacharias response in verse 18. Zachariah asked the angel, um, excuse me, but how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife, well, she's well along in years. Oh man, Zachariah. He missed it. Maybe he thought he was smart to raise his concerns to Gabriel. Maybe he'd given up. It was true that he, he and Elizabeth were old. So maybe he had dismissed any possibility of a miracle. It's not that we can never question God, but God knew what was behind his questions. Look at verse 19 and 20. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Oh boy, God takes our unbelief seriously. That's the point. Our unbelief robs us of what God could have been and what he could have done. Notice God still fulfills that promise to give them a son. And that son was John the Baptist. But because of Zachariah's unbelief, he misses out on what the experience could have been for him. God silenced him. So let's ask an honest question. When God speaks to us, whether through his word or through a sermon or perhaps a supernatural encounter, do we believe him? Do you think you're too old for God to do a miracle in your life? Well, this Christmas season, let's be people who anticipate that God will speak to us. And then let's believe him when he does. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Wow, what a powerful program. Mm -hmm. It's been really, you know what, it really struck me with the stories even today. Yes. How, as you said, you 
so often it's coming to the end of ourselves before we really cry out to God, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, because of that, I really believe that that desperation, thirsty people get filled, desperate mm. people get healed. That's you know, true. when we get to the end of ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, we here at the 700 Club Canada really appreciate your partnership and just linking arms with us and your generosity. You know, tomorrow is the seventh annual Giving Tuesday, a global movement where over 6,500 businesses and charities have participated and we really appreciate you making the 700 club canada a part of your giving and generosity because together we are making a difference in this nation but we'd like to get something into your hands if you have not become a partner with the 700 club canada hey just for 25 dollars a month you can become a partner with the 700 club canada or your best gift and we'd love to get into your hands this particular project it's now the, the the transforming word and pat robertson helps you to understand not only how you can move in the anointing but listening to the power of god's word and allowing that to make your mind into the very transformed instrument that he has called you to hey would you call now 1-855-759-0700 prayer partners are standing by and it'd be such an encouragement That'd be great. Uh, we'd love to pray for you, and we love that you send us your prayer requests. And today, Christopher from, from Ontario asked us to pray for his sister who is in an abusive relationship. Yeah, why don't you do that? Yeah. Father, I pray for Christopher's sister. We ask right now that you would intervene, Lord Jesus, in your mighty power, that you would not only protect her, but free her from this. I pray that you would bring healing and wholeness to that uh, family and that relationship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we want to leave you with a power verse. We believe that the Word of God, as you stand on it and claim it, it literally is more powerful than anything that you can do. Psalms 34 and 17 and 18, it says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their trouble. Mm, so true. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's you today. Please receive that word as a word directly from God. And can I just say, don't be like Zachariah. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Thanks for joining us. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada. Well, I think it's it's seeing the balance between law and grace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obedience is definitely important and God expects us to obey Him. But we fail. Yeah. And uh, for that, there's grace. And that's yeah. amazing, amazing grace. Amazing grace. <laughs> yes. That's so true.